Hey, Earth Signs. How are you guys? Happy spring. Happy airy season. This is going to be your spring, spring equinox reading um, for the first quarter of the year. You know, this is astrologically a new year, which we can also just look at as the actual new year. Everything's coming to life. Things are birthing. Um, newness is in the air. You know, so when I was sitting with you guys' energy, um, well, first, let me talk a little bit about what is happening this spring. We have a full moon, have a new moon in Aries coming up, a full moon in Libra on the 28th, new moon in Aries on the 12th, um, and then we have a full, full moon in Scorpio, new moon in Taurus, come Taurus season, a full moon in Sagittarius, no moon in Gemini, come Gemini season. So we'll really be um, releasing anything in regards to um, those outer things like relationships and um, any type of internal struggles, fears, power struggles with others, anything in regards to um, dealing with other people and then with it and also any type of beliefs that haven't been serving us and that we've been holding on to and really coming into a new state of that, finding um, new ways of relating, new ways of uh, gaining, attaining, you know, really getting into how it is that we feel and um, the beauty that surrounds us in our life, really focusing on the beauty, especially you guys. That's what came up for the earth signs that you guys are really just taking your time with everything like y'all always do already. Um, but this felt like a, a very, a, a flow of ease. Not that you guys aren't always in a state of ease. It's just, it felt different. It felt like very sure in this forward movement, you know, like nobody can tell you anything in the sense of, how it is that you're going about taking care of what you are taking care of. It's almost as if you have the experience here already with you that is going to support you in really um, manifesting, you know, because y'all are all about the physical, y'all. Y'all need to see real fruition of the thing in order for it to be real for y'all, in order for it to be true, you know, to feel solidified in what it is that kind of where it is that you've been and what it is that you're doing and letting the physical results speak louder than um anything else really so <clears throat> we're breaking uh the spring equinox into two halves the first half of spring the second half of spring the first half of spring speaks of nourish so this is about tending to the seeds that you have planted during the winter time um, and really tending to those, um, nurturing those, fertilizing the soil, um, watering, you know, giving the, the, the plant what it needs in order to grow strong, right? And then we have the second half of, the second half of spring, which speaks of growth, is about growing. The leaves on the trees are rebutting. The um, the leaves on the plants, the flowers, everything's coming into bloom, you know, come second half of spring. And really just given that full life experience in that. Um, and we all, in general, not just you earth signs, we're all just coming into that space of really uh, being able to attain what it is that we have over this, because we've kind of been in the stage of winter all 2020, right? Having to stay in, can't do much. Not that everybody hasn't been doing, not that everybody has been not doing much, but majority of us, you know, and that, that can kind of put us in this place of reflection, of rest, really being able to um, see things a little bit more clear unless we had a little bit more of an anxious state. It really just depends on where it is that you were with all of that energy. So we had a lot of time to plant new seeds, to do, to figure out how we wanted to do things differently. 
All right, so yes, we are gonna go ahead and get into Taurus and see what Spirit has to say within the cards for you guys. And yes, I will see you in just a bit, Taurus. Hey Taurus, okay, so for you guys, it seems like um, the main thing that's coming up for y'all during spring is that things are in the background for y'all. So things are happening, but it's not outward front forward on stage or anything like that. Just really almost focusing and tending to your own and letting that be that. Um, and, you know, kind of letting the breeze carry you in a sense and, and flow, um, not by the wayside, but by your own side and doing things how you really desire to do. It's not something that you're feeling like that. It feels like that you don't feel that you need to come out and share it at this moment, but you know that you will. Um, that it will continue to get louder and louder as the seasons change, as time moves forward, you know, and really um, supporting you guys in building that stability, that foundation that you all love so much, you know. So let's get into these cards and see what it is that, um, what, what is it that spirit has for Taurus spirit? Is this some inside guidance clarity? to Taurus, thank you so much for continuing to bless us with your grace, with your love, with your guidance day after day, for waking us up daily and getting us down for a peaceful night's rest, spirit. Offer Taurus, please, some insight on what is happening for them in the spring, in the first half, in the second half, spirit. What is going down for Taurus this year? in spring of 2021, Taurus. 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 Yeah. So Taurus, it seems like your focus, the reason like that things are in the background, kind of at a pause, um, you know, focusing on doing what it is that you can do, but not really any forward movement is due to relationship. Um, the first card and, and really trying to, in a sense, gain, return back to yourself, it seems. Um, you have the seven of pinnacles here. So that is really speaking about um, really taking time to do the work, but it's, it, it's, it's, it seems limiting in a sense, like it, you may want something to be happening right now, um, but this is teaching you patience, teaching you how to really experience and be in the moment and recognize the details and see what it is that needs to be done in order for something great to happen. And this is supporting you in, in this self-soul union, but also in your love relationship, also in your soulmate relationships as well, kind of helping you um, recalibrate in a sense, the way in which it is that you show up and offer and, and be or more so operate within your relationships, you know, really so that you can get to, because the seven is before the eight and eight of pinnacles is a is self-mastery, you know, so that's what you're working on, really trying to um, master how it is that you are within your relationships, in your relationship with yourself, what it is, the, the nurturing and the care in which it is that you are giving to you. You know, this is in the first half, that's in March. And so, you know, it's really, um, you really just focus on love and your, your, your values, your sense of self-worth and how it is that you are going to, um, show up in that in a loving way in in connecting with others but more so than anything um that connection you have to yourself because when that that is when that is prominent when that is um the focus you usually find um you're usually in the space to really be able to show up for other people because it is just naturally in you you know so Let's see, for April, for Taurus, spirit, April for Taurus. 
Oh goodness. Look up the Taurus. Okay. So it's some healing here happening. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this is again this background energy that I was feeling like um, not really being focused on being in not necessarily in the forefront, but like in so many people's faces in a sense, like um, because you are really focusing on on healing the Ten of Swords. See this. It's light. There you go. Okay, so the Ten of Swords is about, you know, really, uh, you're really changing at a very deep level, especially um, within your mind, how it is that you perceive, how you see what you think about, and how you allow those thoughts to come, especially in regards to your emotional nature, right? Because you got the King of Cups here. And, and realizing and recognizing what emotions it is that come up that kind of, um, project these thoughts within your mind that that can get you in that space of seeing things uh, like kind of over exaggerating um something that's not really there or just not seeing clearly at all but also feeling any type of self-conflict as well you know you're doing some really deep root work here within the heart within the mind you know in really coming ushering yourself into the space of emotional maturity, being able to show up in a way um, that you feel or think that you are successfully holding space for another, that you can be that shoulder for another. Um, and perhaps there may be those coming in to be that for you as well. You know, it may be something that you're sharing um, on a communication level with someone. This can also speak to any water signs within your life. Um, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, um, showing up and being in the support of you, um, or even just working on that relationship with them. Um, this relationship that you're experiencing at this time, really helping you transform your mind in um, your values and how it is that you see your self-worth, how it is that you see um, where it is that you are or are not aligned to your your personal value, your personal um, personal sense of self really is it's like you were really ushering out this this place, this really deep place of self-doubt, you know, because we can show up and be confident in that, but there's sometimes where we're doing that, we're still having some sort of self-doubt. And when we do things like that, um, that is the Ten of Swords energy. You know, it's already, you have already been put, made it so that um, what you're doing is not going to work. Even if you're feeling right about uh, that it's going to be successful. Right, because feelings, they not facts. They're not facts, you know, and you are um, figuring out what's more factual in regards to yourself and what that means and how that has manifested things within your life, in your world, you know, but it's, it's a lot of uh, deep healing happening for you in this first half of, of spring. So let's move forward and see what's going on in May for you, Spirit. Taurus, what is going on in May for Taurus? May. Okay, so come May, the transformation is like that full transformation is taking place. You are just letting the old go. It's a rebirth happening. You are blooming. Um, you know, the seed is sprouting from the soil, basically, you know, and you are coming out of that space of, you know, any type of uh, shadow energy, any kind of fears you hold, any type of... Um, doubts that you hold, anything it is that you've been holding on to that has been coming from 
whether that is your upbringing or just runs in your family line, um, that is is transforming as well. You know, it is it's facilitating much growth within your life. What else is here from May Spirit and allowing you to <clears throat> transform in a very deep way? Wow, yes, and so. Um, you have the hangman. So this is basically, again, this is like a faded experience that's happened to you based off the choices you decided to make come the first half of spring so that you could really get into this space of being able to see things more clearly, being able to see the light because hangman, this is Pisces energy. All right. So, or it, well, it's Neptune energy, but same thing. Um, so you know, this is again about your emotions, about how your heart space and um, how it is that you see things in regards to love and unconditionality, you know, the, and now in this space of being willing to surrender to what it is that it's going to take to have any type of successful intimate relationships, um, but to also recognize what needs to be sacrificed in a sense, right? Because you have this death card here. So something is leaving. You realize that in order for growth to truly happen, you have to really fully let go of something that's no longer going to serve you in um, moving forward in a very flow, in your flow, you know, in being able to um, uh, facilitate the growth there, you know, but we have water. This is both water energy so things it's like a cleansing that's happening um in may and it's going to nourish that soil you know it's going to give the the the, the plants that water it needs to really sprout to really take flight in a way that is going to support you in being able to um doing what you want honestly uh because the hang one, the hangman, when that, when it comes, first, it comes before the death card. So you're going to have this transformative experience, but then it's going to take you back, right? It's going to do this cleansing that's going to happen. And it's going to take you, it's going to revert you back so that you can see how, so that you can have a second chance, basically, to do things differently, to do it over again especially in regards to relationship energy, you know, so let's see, spirit, what is here for June? Six of Pentacles, so first card came out for June, it's a Six of Pentacles, all right, so this is basically you're finding balance within your life, within your world, within the people around you, um, a lot of a successful relationships that offer um, the same type of energy that you give, you know, and just giving you a lot of balance. This is Libra energy, although it is pinnacles, it is Libra energy, you know, it is, um, but it's also the moon exalted. So this is being able to, you have now mastered that emotional nature. This is moon and Taurus, all right? So you've reached this, this uh, exaltation come uh, June and really just feeling very um, stable, very grounded in what it is that you're doing, feeling like you have what it is that you've been wanting all this time based off of the work it is that you've been putting in, you know, and really um, focusing on continuing to do what needs to be done to, to keep that same energy moving forward. What else is here in June Spirit? Nine of Swords, right? Because you, you know, it's about truth. It's about harmony, balance, order, you know, moving, cutting through anything that that is not serving, cutting through anything that's not real, cutting through anything that causes confusion so that the balance can be brought, so that the harmony can be brought forth, so that things can move more for move forward more swiftly. Things are moving forward much more swiftly in balance. It's a lot of stability here. All right, this may also be calling of you um, receiving any type of money, your finances, maybe uh, really taking a transformation this year as well. Um, and what was is, is no longer gonna be, it's gonna be something much different than 
where you have been up until all of this time, you know, and really going to support you in being able to live the life that you want. It's interesting. At the bottom here, we also have the nine of swords. So really coming out of that flighty mental space, you know, always feeling a sense of confusion, always feeling like it's not going to work or it's not working. Something's wrong. Something always got to be wrong. When in reality, uh, it, it might just be you, Taurus, you know, and that's what the nine of swords speaks of. It, it just, it's just you deal it's like you know you're ready to deal with that internal noise for real so that you can move forward and really um move into a state of effortlessness in regards to connecting connecting with yourself connecting with spirit connecting with the relationships within your life without any type of friction confusion competition <clears throat> conflict what's here for the first half of spring for Taurus, like it's an ambulance coming by. It's like ring the alarm. It's like a big wake up call. Like ah, that's what this been this entire time. It's not even gonna be what you think it is. That'd be the craziest thing. Like you're thinking, oh, it's so big, and it's like, and then it comes, and it's like, oh, that's what that was. Mmm, that wasn't even me. That wasn't even me. <laughs> it's wild in these streets. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. So you're focusing on what it is that you need to do to lead in your life come the first half of spring, really taking ownership for what it is that you need to do. Um, how are you being called to step up and lead? And this is solely about your life. How do you need to show up so that you can have what it is that you want for your life. So it can look like what it is that you want it to look like for your life. So it can feel that way as well, you know? So it can even look like that too, you know? So let's see. For the second half of Spring Spirit, what is here for Taurus? What is here for Taurus? Second half of Spring. <clears throat> Dance, yeah, wow, we got dance here, and then you got the death card and the hangman here with this knight of swords, like, the energy is shifting, for real, like, your vibration is taking on a whole new level, you know, you are coming out of something that has been um, keeping you stagnant internally, not necessarily in regards to what it is you have, but shifting that is going to allow you space to like your, your ability to attract is going to be much more, um, it's going to be on a whole nother level than it has been ever. Okay. And it is going to provide you with, um, a sense of fulfillment and, and joy and happiness, you know, and really just you, you finally are able to wear the rose colored glasses and it, it's meaningful. It's not a uh, disillusion or anything of that nature, you know. So let me see what else is this spirit. What else is this spirit? What is what would you like Taurus to know? Oh All right, those are interesting. I'll keep that in mind with whatever card comes out. Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Completion. Yeah. Wow. And so that whole going in circles and continuing to experience the same cycle and all of those things is coming to an end. It's ending. It's over. No more, no more eating your tail. You know, no more continuing to really relive the same things over and over again. Um, it's just time for a change. Cycles are ending. You have seen the light within that needs to, um, that was what was going to show you what needs to be seen in order for you to um, really move into where it is that you're going, what it is, you know, what's your goal, what's your aim? That's, that's what's happening. You are closing out old cycles that have been experienced for quite some time. 
because when the completion card, the completion card and the death card comes up. So this has been happening in some form or fashion for a very long time. It, it's just, it's ending, it's over. Let's see. What's the first spirit for Taurus? For spring, for Taurus. Mm. <laughs> so Taurus, you have the you have Queen and Fertrite. She's not a mermaid, um, but she says faith is an optimist that shows which way to flow. So this is all about keeping the faith, um, and it speaks of that because she had to trust. Um, the sea creatures to carry her forward to make it back to her castle, right, from being caught in the sea. Um, she speaks about supernatural feminine wisdom, right? So this is you being really tapped into or even connected to someone who offers you this, something that is, uh, that can only be sourced within, honestly. Um, it's not something that can be taught. It says, Amphitrite, queen of feminine intuition, symbolizes symbolizes spiritual activity. This is the po a positive card for you. The wave you have to surf will be easier to ride if you tell yourself that you'll enjoy the journey, as did Amphitrite when the dolphin led her back to her lover. Life takes a turn for the better and problems are swept away. Your path ahead appears inviting and challenging. Set your sights high and avoid being forced to rethink your position. Impulse may hinder rather than prove how calm and reassuring you can be. You will find out what's going on beneath the surface and on discovery will quite easily turn the tide to make life flow on. So this is also about tapping, simply tapping into that inner sacred wisdom, you know, those secrets that don't nobody, um, that no one can really tell you. And this is something, like I said, something that's been going on for a long time. It's coming to an end so that you can really um, be in a space of uh, be in a space of really regaining yourself. The truth of you. The truth of you, that, that wholeness, that soul expression of yourself. You know, but it's it's just it's taking that internal reflection. So it's definitely um, why you are you know focused more on the background things, not so much focused on the forefront of of life. Granted, that's still going on. That's not going to stop, right? But um, it's almost as if your consciousness is taking a back seat to really come into a space of connecting with that subconscious energy. You are reworking your mind, your um, your, your brain waves, right? So the card that you have is independent. So it's like you are finding your own way, your own route, you know, and being in, this is not necessarily saying that it's about having an independent nature no matter what. You know, you can always be around a bunch of people and be independent. You don't, you know, it's learning that you can do you whenever, however. It says, I embrace total independence and I see how empowering that is. Even when I'm in a relationship, I can still be independent by meeting my own needs and creating my own happiness. When I do that, I'm full of, I am the fullest version of myself and have much more to give without needing pieces of me in return, right? So this is also um, coming into that space of not relying on another person to make you happy based off of what it is they're doing. It is even your significant other, right? So these are your close relationships, your familiar relationships, like however a person shows up should not affect your your happiness your fulfillment and your learning how to embrace that learning how to embody that within yourself within your life because you're in a place at this time where whatever relationships it is that are coming in that are surrounding you 
that you're in, they are perfect matches for you. You vibe really well with these people. And however it is that you're thinking in your mind about these relationships, it's not real. It's literally just all in your mind. You know, it's not, it's not what you have made it out to be. You know, you got break the chain here at the bottom. So it's ancestral patterns healing, rewriting the future. Things are definitely um, shifting. It's, it's about focusing on your goal, focusing what is your vision for life. Focus on that. That Let that be your star player, your star focus. Let that be that brightest light that's drawing you to wherever it is that you're going. Focus on what is yours so you don't have to feel any, about, any kind of way about what it is you have based off of what someone else has. Right, because you are deserving of what you have the same way that other person is deserving of what they have. You know, it, it's uh, simply about acknowledging, embracing, and accepting that and seeing the good and the great in where it is that you are. You know, okay, what else is your spirit connection? So, definitely, wow, it's really all about relationships with you all, Taurus, and really um, connecting with those from a within your life, with who you meet, with who show up, you know, and it says I'm connected to the multitudes and I can access their support at any time. Even a stranger offers a sense of comfort when they smile at me or make a dumb comment about the weather. Everyone is waiting to connect. All I need to do is open myself up and pay attention. Note to self, work on witty banner about weather related stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, um, this is all about connecting to source as well, being in constant connection to that. You know, it's also like you're realizing that if you have already been doing it, how much that has paid off for you, how much it is, how much benevolence that truly brings into your world, into your life you know so what else what else spirit how are we closing out this reading for Taurus what else is here for Taurus spirit Taurus Scorpio Wow, so lots of transformation taking place. And then you got Pisces here on the bottom. So, you know, just really um, transformation at source level, you know, in, in what the, the cosmic, um, the cosmic connection, right, that is uh, supporting you, but also what it is that has lived there all this time that has kind of been reverbing itself in your life. Right, and letting go of old karmic patterns that just don't serve anymore. You know, you are, spring is bringing you to a, a space of true lightness, true lightness, not just, okay, I feel this way because X, Y, and Z, but truly feeling like, like, I ain't got no worries. That's the song that's coming up, um, whatever, that Lil Wayne song. Um, you know, and truly being able to be seen in that and, and, you know, seeing yourself in that even, that reflection of who it is that you are being is showing up in your life, you know, and you, you just like, oh, wow, like, I see myself. Thank you, spirit. Thank you. Thank you for the signs. Thank you for the guidance. Thank you for the grace, you know. Let's see your spirit. Mercury. Okay, so it's like old habits are dying, especially in the mental realm. We got the seven of scare. So this is about creation of life, creation of self, and really just um, moving forward and manifesting something different. This is also has to do with your service out into the world and what it is that you do and offer. So what it is that you're going through um, or not going through, but experiencing in the spring is probably going to put you on this in this space of being able to share this with others, being able to be of service with others, and, and you know, giving this to them as well so that they can um, flow like you flowing, you know, go with the waves and 
be able to embrace the tide when it comes. This is um, this is mutable energy. It speaks about assimilation. So really, what you're nourishing yourself, you're actually taking it in. Your you, your body is becoming part of that. So again, that embodiment energy, um, the nutrients are fueling you in a way that is transforming you from the inside out. <clears throat> It says mentality, the abdomen, intestine, soul, lifting spirit out of matter, planet of the mind, hermit, the hermit, wisdom offered, sacrifice without regret, and self-care. So really taking time to focus on yourself this spring, Taurus, and, you know, uh, recognizing the wisdom that lives within based off the experiences it is that you had and where it is that you are right now today and how that is moving forward for you you know, and really manifesting something very beautiful, something very great, something that's going to bring you a lot of solace and magic into your life and into your world, you know, through work and through connection with others. So Taurus, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you have a beautiful spring and I will see you in the summertime. All right. Bye. One moment. Hey Virgo, how are you? I hope that spring has been good to you. It's just starting. For whenever you watch this, you may watch this later on um, when we are almost at the end of spring, who knows? But um, when I was sitting with your energy Virgo, what came up was um, doing things because you want to do them not leaving out what matters the most and only focusing on what it is that you want, what you want to be doing in the way in which it is that you want to be doing it. You know, kind of not doing a thing simply because someone said that you should do it that way and that makes it right. <clears throat> and, you know, because it, it seems like you have a lot of energy coming in toward you this month, whether in many forms, maybe getting a lot of downloaded messages you may be getting a lot of um people showing up a lot of money you know a lot of thoughts especially in the realm of this being new but at the same time it could be things that already exist in your world okay and it's a really Really a need to always make sure that you solely focus on what is yours and, and, and feel into what it is that is being offered to you, what is coming to you, and if that actually aligns with who it is that you are and what it is that you want in your life. You know, so let's see. It's also a good time for you to really um, focus on your health, focus on getting rid of anything that is just kind of in your way. Um, you know, that doesn't, just cleansing out any blockages, whether that is on the spirit level, whether that is on the physical level, however that looks like for you, you know, and really just truly aligning with who it is that you are not that Virgo ever has an issue with that but sometimes Virgos y'all are really y'all are really loving people you know and y'all um much like y'all's opposite Pisces y'all will sacrifice yourself for the greater good of all and sometimes that does not um that does not always support you. It doesn't always serve you, especially, um, you know, pay attention to the reciprocity of the thing. Um, granted, there may be someone who you come in contact with who can't do something back for you and you don't always have to be doing stuff for others in order to receive something. But those who come to you often always need something, definitely take that into consideration of, of being aware of the energetics of that relationship, of those types of relationships that you put yourself in. Are you getting paid enough for your job? You know, things like that. Are you um, getting similar energy that you're putting out? Are you receiving that back? 
Don't overextend yourself. What is your Virgo? What would you like for them to know today, right now, during the spring with Equinox energy? What would you like to take forward with them? What guidance, what insight? Thank you for your continuous love, grace, and presence that you show up for with Virgo and supporting them and guiding them into all the great things it is that is coming into their life, into their world, into their spirit. What would you like for them to know <clears throat> spring for the first half in March? This year. Wow. So Virgo. It's very interesting. The first card that comes up is the high, the hangman. All right, so this is um this is Neptune Piscean energy. So this is speaking about how it is that you're perceiving things, how you're seeing things, how you're feeling about things. Also about if you have been, and it feels like that you have been sacrificing yourself quite a bit versus what it is that you're receiving. And I say that because the King of Cups here comes up, right? So the King of Cups, he, he is the space holder. He is a provider of nourishment in regards to the emotions. Like um, he's not self-serving in the least bit. He shows up in regards to another's emotions. He knows how to um, cooperate with another to make them feel at ease, feel at home. And it's almost as if you need to sacrifice this aspect of yourself in order um, to come into alignment for this to turn up so that you can see things a little bit more clear, right? And because this is like, um, I take advantage of you energy, right? Now, perhaps maybe you've taken advantage of somebody and that's something to consider as well um, if you are. So definitely see how it is that you have been giving. This is more, these are receiving energies, true, but they are also very, very giving, especially in the realm of water, the realm of emotions, the realm of feelings, you know? so. Um, the realm of love, unconditional love, accepting people for who it is that they are. But if they have not, oh man, because, you know, that's everything that I was feeling like really take care to how it is that you offer up your energy. How do you give your cup to another? Not saying that you're not filling your cup because Virgo usually takes care of self, of oneself, right? Really well. Um, so it's not the it's not necessarily the fact that you don't have enough to give. It's just simply the fact of um, who's taking advantage of the fact that you have so much to give. You know, granted, this can also just speak about a lot of unconditional love being present in your life in March. You know, feeling very fulfilled within um, the choices it is that you have made in um, this this King of Cups energy. This very fluid, very open, very um, embraceive kind of love, a relationship, connection that you're experiencing um, is it, changing your perspective on relating to others, on connecting with others as well. So let's see what else is here. And that's interesting because I was like, um, before I was like, maybe is Virgo parched? And with all this water here, um, you know, it may be, you know, make sure you stay hydrated in the month of March or well, the rest of this month because the month will be over in like 10, 11 days. But, um, yes, yeah, definitely take care to recognize, uh, where it is that you are not being hydrated, where you are. Let's, okay, let's say for instance, you're walking through the desert, right? 
you're not thirsty, you got water, but everybody else around you, they, they didn't come prepared, they didn't bring any water, jugs, nothing like that, so you've been letting everybody have a little sip, but then y'all get to this turning point, and you thirsty, like, oh, I walked all these miles, I need something to drink, and you turn that, you turn that the jug of something down, and like two drips come out, right, that, mm -mm. right, stop letting everybody drink from your cup, especially if they not refilling it. Are they willing to go cut a cactus open and, and fill it up? Yeah, it's time for you to do something by yourself. Okay. <laughs> All right. So first we got the page of, of Pentacles. So this speaks about, this is in April. It speaks about something that you have been building, something that you have been putting your efforts into, something that you have been really um, working toward manifestation in your life, something that's going to bring something very um, financially sustainable for you, right? This can also just be about family legacy for you and you really being on this path of, you know, it's new for you, but you're ready. You're doing it. You're going forward. You know, you're trusting in what it is that you cannot see, right? And it's important that you continue to do that. And it's important that you do this in a very independent nature on your own, whether this is building your life, building, building stability, building um, a business, however it is, you got to do this by yourself. Can nobody else come with me, come with you? Um, this is not the plate that anyone eats off of, except for those who are already, um, <laughs> except for family members, like children in husbands and wives, okay? So, um, and maybe mothers and fathers. Um, but, you know, this is something that you you have uh, did on your own, you cultivated on your own, you started at the Ace of Pentacles by yourself, right? Now you are, you at this, at this page stage, you, so that means you are now, it, it's coming out, right? It is, it's the active forward movement. And the page of Pentacles is looking at this nine of Pentacles, like, and the, even the nine of Pentacles is, is facing the page of Pentacles. It's looking down, but it's like, hey, we got, we got have to do this by ourselves. We got to do this by ourselves. It is by our, it is on your own efficient, efficiency that you manifest. This is, this is airy season here, all right? Sure, it's Taurus season too, so that is abundance and all those whatnots. But this is Aries season, and as an Aries, just here to let you know, we, you know, we will work with other people, but we do better, we do good by ourselves, right? Because not because other people can't do it, but simply it's just sometimes people are not willing to put in the same effort that we are willing to put the effort into. Right, you don't always have to have a team for success, and these cards show this here. Spirit, what is here for May for Virgo? May for Virgo, Spirit. What is here for Virgo in May? Four of Swords. So, Four of Swords um, is it's very interesting. Even in the fire sign readings, May seems like a very steady month like we're all kind of taking this break really ushering in the healing the realizations and everything it is that we've had up until this first half of spring right because the first half of spring things are kind of popping off whether that's internally or outside of us and it's like we just all kind of need to take a break and rest and here you have the four of swords so you know really taking time to be still be within yourself to meditate to rest to kind of clear your mind as well and um get your bearings what else is your spirit ace of wands okay so because you're about to um you're having some new sort of insight some new sort of inspiration um, you're about to do something differently in the way in which it is that you've been doing it up until this point, right? Because when the Four of Swords comes up, it, it's after the Three of Swords, it's like, it's kind of like a heartbreak in a sense. Um, a loss has happened. Um, things did not pan out the way in which you had desired them to. So now you have to do things differently. You have to, it's, it's like a lone wolf kind of situation, you know, and uh, tending to your own flame, 
really, and just recognizing that um, this is just a better route for you. It feels kind of feeling a little sad, um, almost like a, I don't know, like a punch to the gut, maybe like, like it wasn't what that you were expecting, what it was that you had wanted, but it's going to turn out better um, than it would have with the idea that you had once before, which is why that Ace of Wands is coming up because you get to do things in your own way, in your own right. Okay. What's happening in June for Virgo Spirit? June for Virgo. Okay. Yeah. So you have the Page of Wands <clears throat> come June. And this is a uh, trailblazing news. Like you don't have any experience in doing the thing, but you're willing to go and learn as you move forward, as you um, take the steps and, and, and make that you know, make things go. It's like you're choosing to listen to spirit this time around instead of uh, relying on how it is that you feel a situation should go, how you feel that things should be, you know? Um, and instead it's like, okay, this is what my spirit is telling me. This is what source has put in my heart and I'm going to go for it. And this is what I'm going to do, you know, and really focus on that energy is these are, this is fire energy. So uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, they are all very focused on oneself. Granted, other people are involved too. They don't do things solely on their own, no. But um, this is about them coming ablaze. You know, that is what fire is. It's, it's um, it, it basically burns the ground. It's kind of like um, how farmers or how cattle owners, they burn the, the one portion of the, the ranch or whatever it's called so that new um, healthy grass can grow, right? Something new uh, is really coming forward and it's gonna be much more nurturing than what it was before. What else is here for in June for Virgo? June for Virgo. The Queen of Pentacles, yep. See, and you are basically, what, what you have been putting the work into is coming to you, right? You are, are basically, it, it's here. You are receiving it, okay? And that's because you chose to take a different route. Um, you chose to do things in the way that you wanted to do them, not based off of anyone else's opinions or, um, you know, really focused on your own personal sovereignty. And that brought you the, that's bringing you the results it is that you want. And it, it's, it's abundance, all right? It, it's strictly abundance. Let me see something. I know what I'm trying to see. 2012. Wow. Yeah. So it is like that whole, this, this in March. Um, what it's, what you are being shown, right? What you have seen, what this perspective it is that you are having to shift and change, um, is what brings forth this queen of pentacles energy. This is, um, this is like that final cut kind of thing. And it's offering you what it is that is necessary in order for you to build a legacy that is for you, that is meant for you, not for anybody else. All right, because you come you come into this very, very clear understanding that the king of swords here. Um, and you know, he's a kind guy, but he don't play. He like mm -mm. no, nah, what's the truth? What's really going on here? Kind of thing. And it's like getting to the truth of the matter is really what sets you forward and being able to support you in um just moving forward with what it is that needs to be done on your own you know, without any, without any love lost, you know, there will be some time where you have to uh, kind of deal with the disappointment of, of the thing, but it, it, it's working itself out. So then here, the first half of spring, we have warrior woman. If you weren't afraid, what would you do? So that is a, speaking, a, she's holding that sword of truth. You, it's like you have to face the truth of the matter, face the truth of what is here, 
so that you can go about doing what it is that you need to do. And it seems like perhaps because you don't have the experience with both of these pages coming out, um, it kind of uh, creates some type of fear that what if if I don't do this with someone else, will I be able to make it on my own kind of energy? But the answer is yes, you will, you can, and you will. All right, you will and you will succeed. You just have to trust it. You have to know that that sticking to the truth, sticking to the light, right, is what is going to give you what you are desiring. Yeah. So in the second half of spring, you have no here. No, it says wait, postpone, pause. So um it's like whatever it is that you have to say no to, it, it's going to, it's bringing you that fruition but it's also bringing that sense of uh disappointment you know it's like okay i gotta say no to this you know this is not going to work out how i anticipated i have to do this differently and then you got fill up your own well so you really it's spring is all about you focusing on yourself and what is yours to do um it's no other way to put it really wow Wow, wow, wow. Wow. You know, because it's not necessarily like, it's not showing that you have to let anybody go. <sighs> you know, and perhaps you have somebody around you that is not as, might come off as like some hidden enemy energy. Yeah, so you got the vision quest here. Um, as this oracle card and this is a six this is about six is lover card energy this is gemini energy so this is about making decisions making choices recognizing your own sense of wholeness right and being in the space of who it is that you are and focusing on what vision it is that you have for yourself for your life you know what is it that you want with that do that focus on that only don't worry about whatever it is that somebody else has to say, whatever it is somebody is having to experience based off of the choices you are making, because in reality, they don't want to have to deal <laughs> with themselves. Like, why are they, why are you feeling like this? Like, this is my life, this is what I want to do. You know, so um, check your, they, they need to check themselves. Uh, it's not your responsibility to worry about them. It's your responsibility to focus on what is yours to do. You know what you want to do. You've got the vision. You are the creator in your life. You are the authority in your life. Okay. You make the choices and the decisions that are going to um, move you forward in a way that is going to help you bring in what it is that you, what you want in your life. What's your goals? The North Node is in Gemini, okay? So this is about destiny. This is, this has been written before you even thought about this. This has been in action, all right? So let's see, what else is here, Spirit? What else is here for my beautiful Virgos? Virgo Spirit, what else is here? All right. Oh, that's a lot of cards. Mm. Okay. There we go, there we go, there we go. Where's that spirit? What is this? Mm. All right. So, I don't know what's going on in your life personally. You have this creature here. This is the Charbitis and Scylla, and Scylla, Charbitis and Scylla. It says the future holds promise. And he is a number 47, which is an 11. So that is one that's Libra energy. So it's about justice, balance, but it's about truth. Got the King of Swords here at the bottom. That's also Libra energy. So it's about what brings you harmony and balance, right? But this, this creature, all right, he speaks about caution. <laughs> Well, I'm going to read this for you because he talks about people that you're connecting with. It says, and you may be between two difficult or faithful works or between two equal dangers. Trying to avoid one hazard, you fall into, into another peril or seeking to avoid one fault, you stumble into another error. Charbitis and Scylla are 
Skila <laughs> are formidable monsters. Skila has six, six heads, six necks, and a triple world of teeth to snap up the innocent. And Charbidus is a whirlpool that swallows up ships. They indicate that you may be tempted to fall in with the wrong person or situation. If you are in two minds about something, seeing the dangers will help you avoid repeating or making a greater mistake. By sticking to your principles, you are more likely to survive, right? So focus on your personal vision. Stop or I don't know who's here, who you're trying to do something with or whatever, but it's that's not the right route. Whatever you're doing, it's, it's really, spirit is like, hey, you got to do this by yourself. Um, everybody is not meant to tag along with you. You have to be realistic. That's one thing about Libra. They're really realistic. They're really practical in their thought. Um, they, they only care about what is the truth, right? So when they see something, they like, oh, all right, no, like, I'm not even going to question you. I'm just pull back. I'm just do what it is that I need to do for myself because this ain't it you know not with you <laughs> so definitely um take some time to sit down and consider what's going on and who's going on with and what that really means for you spirit what else is here acceptance yeah so you have to really, that's like I said, you know, really just face the truth of the matter, accept what it is for what it is so that you can kind of um, let things go in a way um, that still leaves love there, right? Because this card says, when I get to know new people, I accept their actual traits rather than the ones I project on them. Same goes for not new people, I already know. Acceptance is the delicate art that reminds us everyone is their own unique self and we can't expect them to ever be anything but. Man, how do those, fla how do those snowflakes do it? <laughs> but you know, all snowflakes are different. So you really have to accept people for who it is that they truly are, not like, Pay attention to what people telling you. Read between the lines. Don't just take people's words for face value. I know you would like to, because we all would. You know, we all would love to um, accept that somebody is being as real with us as we are with them. But in reality, unfortunately, that is not always the case. Unfortunately, like. Everybody dealing with something, holding on to something, and got them showing up, and however it is that they showing up, you know, and it's not anything personal toward you. It's just people can't help but be who it is that they are, and we have to respect them for that. At least I feel that way. You don't have to feel that way, um, because I know when I choose that, then I can let people go on and do whatever it is that they need to do for themselves. Like I, I don't, I don't dictate your how you feel, what you got going on, vice versa, you know? So when I can accept that and accept how I'm feeling, then I create the space that is needed for everybody to go do their own thing. All right, however that may look. What else is your spirit? Self-love. <laughs> Damn, Virgo. <laughs> so, yeah, do... Act like you love yourself and do what is best for you. That is even, that is part of acceptance, you know, because if you just let people tell you what they think you want to hear at the moment, um, that's going to cause, that causes a lot of confusion. That's what brings that three of, of swords energy, right? But you, you are really focused on desiring to have peace and pleasure, right? And if, if those things are not being built, then that's just, that's not the, those are not the people that you're doing it with. That's not the space you're doing it with. Maybe you can do it with them, but they're not, they not here. It's, in it. it's <laughs> um, what's that song? I don't know the name of the song, but you wouldn't with me shooting in the gym, whatever Drake song that is, that's that, right? So it's self-love says, I openly embrace a feeling of self-love, the PG kind. I love myself because I understand myself. I love myself as the most committed partner I will ever have. I show myself love any way that I can. And when I screw up, I remember to be sweet and gentle with myself. 
If not, I'm going to make myself sleep on the couch. Got that self? So people can still be with you and still not be in the gym with you shooting those baskets. Let's not get that twisted. So, yes, let's see. What else is here, Spirit? What else is here for Virgo? Virgo. Mm. So this is a summertime energy. It's a savor. Um, so it's really time for you to be able to enjoy your life the way in which it is that you want. Really embrace all of that, all of those things, you know. Um, so whatever it is that's here that you are building towards, you can also possibly expect this to manifest very greatly in an enjoyable way come summertime. I think this is, let me see. Yeah, it's the second half of summer. So this is like a Leo Virgo season. I think maybe, so probably around your birthday or something, you may be, that may be what your birth, you may be celebrating for your birthday, you know, that you um, came, got to this queen of pinnacle stage, right? Started to receive, but come summertime, it got really big for you. You know, it got really popping. So let's see. What else is here, Spirit? Last card for Virgo. What else is here for Virgo? Virgo, Virgo. So, okay. You have the waxing crescent moon here. So the waxing crescent moon is, you know, you're getting bigger, you're sprouting, the seed has been planted and now um, it's, it's spring energy, right? So um, in the spring, things will begin to sprout, right? And, but it seems like they won't come to full fruition until the summertime. And you will really be able to enjoy things more then. Let me see. What is this? To this fresh energy, conceptual, conceptualization, focusing on the details. Explore your dreams, read them out loud, make them feel real. Provision of nourishment in order to encourage new life to take root, right? So this is that vision quest energy. What is it that you want? How do you want this? How do you want to feel about it? What do you want it to look like? Write these things down. Get really sure about them if you haven't already. Um, you know, get clear on these things. Um, stop focusing on feeling that you need to do something with anybody. Those who are there, who belong around you, who will truly, fully support you, they will come. Um, it might not be till the summertime. You know, and that's something that has to be accepted and embraced. Focus on loving yourself. Focus on taking care of yourself. Focus on you this spring. Um, let people be who they are because we can't control what anybody else choose or who it is they choose to show up as and be, you know. So I'm going to leave it there, Virgo. I hope that this is helpful for you this spring. It brings you a lot of love and I hope you enjoy your your equinox energy. All right. I'll see you in the summertime. Bye. Hey, Capricorn. How are you? Happy spring. Spring has finally sprung. Okay. <laughs> it is a wonderful thing. So I sat a little bit with your energy. And what came up is it feels like that you are going to be being of support for other people, not that you aren't always already, um, but in a way that is one helping you close old doors, but also helping others do the same, right? Helping them come out of any type of, of cycles that um, get, get them uh, kind of stuck in a sense uh, that create a lot of, of chaos, loudness in their life. Um, but also you for yourself really um, taking a new route in regards to how it is that you operate within the world and through the 
just how you show up in your energy space, you know, and uh, coming off a little more lighter, you know, because Capricorn, well, we can be a little stoic. I get it. I got a Capricorn moon, okay? So um, things can be serious sometimes. Granted, Capricorns like to have fun too. Um, but those who are really focused on work and, and fulfillment and the success in their life and their reputation and things of that matter, um, it cannot be so much that. And it's like, it, it's shifting, it's switching. Something like the switch is either turning on or turning off, but it feels like it's coming on. Not that it's off. It feels like it's already been off and it's time for it to come on. Um, and for you to embrace a different side of yourself that you've experienced. Granted, this may be a side of yourself that has always existed, but you could have possibly put to the wayside, like kind of let it go. Um, and you are now just deciding to do things a little bit differently, um, flow a little bit more. Let me close these blinds. Okay, and really just um, also sticking to what it is that works as well um, and what it is that would be best for you in that working. So let's pull some cards to see what spirit has, right? Because it's almost like you are done within this space of your life of continuing to always have to fix things. Like you don't, it's like, uh, yeah, I don't want to keep doing that anymore kind of energy. Um, and just kind of enjoying life for what it is at this moment becoming a little bit more present not being so focused on the future right because that's usually when we're in the state of a need to fix right let me fix this so that later on you know we don't know what could happen that kind of energy What is here for Capricorn for spring or the month of March? Spirit? What would you like Capricorn to know? Thank you, Great Spirit, for continuing to offer your grace, your love, your guidance in support of Capricorn and where it is that they are going, where they're headed for March for spring. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right. So. Here we have the Two of Cups here, and the Two of Cups speaks about um, connection. It's about intuition. It's about um, in your emotional nature, you know, and kind of uh, coming into the soul union of the self. But it also feels like there will be some new relationships showing up for you, um, something new and fresh in a sense, because it is uh, you have the Page of Wands here. So this this is those. Um, people who bring a lot of life and light into your life. It's just fire and water, you know? So this is a really good balance of energy, very cleansing type of relationships in a sense um, that offer you a, a really soul-based connection. This might be soulmate energy that's coming through now. This could even be you, a new way of connecting to yourself, right? And, and feeling very inspired to... Um, kind of do things in a more innovative way, in a more um, fun way, right? Because Page of Wands, he's fire energy. So he wants the excitement, he wants the adventure, you know, and he's willing to do whatever it is that he's willing to do, <laughs> even without the experience. It's like, I'm, I'm going to learn as I go, right? But some of you may be coming into a new relationship, with someone, whether that is a friendship or a love relationship, um, it is really giving you a, a, a true sense of excitement, you know, a true sense. Now, if you're already in a relationship, that you could be experiencing some really new emotions with who it is that you were with and um, feeling very fulfilled in that, feeling very connected with them and with yourself in that relationship. 
All right, so let's see what else is here, Spirit. April. What is here for April for Capricorn? April for Capricorn, Spirit, what do you have for Capricorn for April? Yeesh. That's too many cards. Capricorn for April. Mm. So, April, you are walking away from uh, some old emotional space within yourself, um, even old relationships that uh, don't fulfill you, that don't seem authentic to you, that don't allow you the space to be who it is that you are, really do what it is that you want to do for yourself, for your life, you know, and um this is really supporting you in coming to this emotional fulfillment in really harmonious relationships within yourself, right? Because there is some relationships that have been around you that have been very deceptive, very sly, like, you know, um, what's this about? Okay. Um, so there are relationships around you that has not just been true, to what it is that they've been showing you. Um, they have not been very clear on their intentions, it seems. Um, and, you know, you put you within this, you may also just be walking away from this within yourself, um, feeling very detached right, from any type of relationships, any type of um, connection to yourself. It can be very easy for Capricorn to be detached from their emotions because, um, you know, Capricorns, we deal with emotions differently than anybody else, all right? It, it's, it's different. I can't put it into words for real, even being a Capricorn moon, but it's just different, you know, and it, it's really... Um, that's ending, whether that is within a relationship, relationships that you already have, or just a relationship with yourself, so that you can come out on the other side, like uh, not deceiving yourself of how it is that you truly feel about where it is that you are and what it is that you have, you know, so let's say um, the, this relationship that you're already in, right, it is taking a uh, new route a new new heights in love right so um in in april you were walking away from those old emotions that had you in this space of feeling like you couldn't trust it that had you feeling like you just weren't sure you know um feeling like you had to um hold your cards close to your chest like you couldn't fully be, be yourself that's ending right and any type of relationships that you've had that have been that way that's ending as well let's see what what is here in june spirit what is here in june june spirit what is here for the second half of spring for capricorn Okay, so um, we have the Eight of Swords here. So the Eight of Swords, it feels like this is ending. Um, if you've been feeling any type of sense of victimization, feeling like a victim in your circumstance, or if you've been feeling trapped, you're coming out of this, that's ending. Um, you are really just gaining a new perspective, like in a sense, cutting your losses. All right, because in, wow, in April, you got the Seven of Swords, and then in May, you got the Eight of Swords here, so that's ending, this, this energy is, is gone, you know, yeah, emotional growth, because you have the Eight of Swords here with the Five of Cups, so this victimization that had been making you feel disappoint, disappointed, right? The, the Eight of Swords, they have their hand over their eyes. So it's, it's kind of like the victimization is of the self. It's not really happening. The way in which um, they perceive it to be happening is like a lot of scattered energy in the mind that's creating false narratives, right? And creating disappointment, but that is ending. Um, and you are having a lot of emotional growth um, shifting into this space of emotional fulfillment within your relationships, within yourself, within your life, within your mind, okay? And um, spring is, is taking you to a, another, a new place, you know, because the five of cups is not looking at 
um, the Eight of Swords is, is, is moving forward into grabbing that next cup, which is the Six of Cups, um, which is nostalgia and, and fulfillment, soul, soul connections and love. Also children for June Spirit, yeah. So we have the Nine of Wands here. So you're learning to put up boundaries for yourself, right? In a way that is gonna be healthy for you, but also you have like one last step that needs to be taken in order for you to get to um, this last space in which you are attempting to move forward. And it feels like a lot of relationship energy that is here. No, it's just here. Yeah, yeah. So you have the nine high high priestess here with the um, nine of wands. And so this is speaking to me of really going within and really seeing your truth, seeing your light, seeing what it is that you hold, and recognizing that you are needing to put up boundaries here, right? Especially in regards to those who um, have not really been aligned with you, but also within your own self. Perhaps you need to put boundaries up in your own mind, right? Around the way that you um, see things. You might be um, letting yourself be bound into some type of imprisonment that is not allowing you to really enjoy life, to really um, feel fulfilled in life, right? Because judgment is here. It's a judgment call. It's time you call yourself back, right? It's time for transformation. It's time for um, letting go of the things that uh, do not serve you anymore, right? So again, with that energy that I said, that there is something that you, a place that you've already been, but you kind of have, uh, walked away from, you seem to be coming back to that, right? Because these boundaries that are being put up or you pulling yourself out of these boundaries are connecting you to your, the wisdom it is that you have gained throughout all of this time, Capricorn. Yeah, and you're taking, in June, you're taking the final step of that, and it is going to put you into this space of um, the infinite, right? So your ability to receive is going to be um, great, grand, you know, it's going to be limitless, basically. The first half of spring spirit, what is here? For the first half of spring, we have a corner. Yeah, so the first half of spring is you have this eight of cups here and it's saying asking where it is it in Marama, where are you being called to journey to? So you are moving into a new space, you know, moving into something that you can actually swim in and not get caught in the tide, right? You are moving forward into this grand space of things, grand space of feeling, grand space of perceiving and seeing as well, second half of spring spirit, and really just letting go of everything that kind of um, keeps you waiting in the water, <laughs> you know, kind of uh, stuck in a sense. Spirit, what else is here? Second half of spring. Yeah, and you're focusing on what lights you up, right? So it's, you got the star seed here. So focusing on having connections that um, are fulfilling to you, uh, focusing on who it is that you are and what it is that you want to do, how it is that you want to show up and be, and feeling very light and effervescent within that energy, you know, and not taking on um, what is not real, killing those false narratives about yourself so that you can fully show up and be who it is that you are so that uh, you can be in that, that, you know, you're ending old cycles, basically, right? Because the high priestess is about cycles as well. She's ruled by cancer, which is ruled by the moon. And with this nine of wands, um, he speaks about you're at this last final step 
of um, putting these old cycles to an end, right? And so you are very focused in what's bringing this is you being focused on what lights you up, right? So we can be externally doing something, but sometimes it takes us to be doing something consistently in order to actually change how it is that we feel within about ourselves, about our life and all of those things. So it's definitely, it, it's a process, but it's, you're already in the flux of doing that, you know, what else is here? You may be connecting with someone who may be able to help you do that, or you may just be focusing on beauty, being devoted to things, to, you know, aspects in your life that support you in growth. You may also be teaching this to people. That might be a thing. Maybe showing people how to do this, right? Because I was talking about with that channel message, like um, you showing up for people in a different way, being supportive of them in a different way. You got the same card as Virgo. Yeah. You're a, you're a very wise person, Capricorn. Um, you have the vision quest here. So this is about making decisions that lead you to where it is that you see your life going. What direction do you see your life taking? What is your vision for your life? Where is the light? Where does that reside? What does that look like? What does that feel like for you? What do you want it to feel like? What do you want it to look like? Really focusing on that and not focusing on anything else that doesn't really that you know don't let don't let somebody else's opinions um about what it is that you're choosing to do affect you in any way because um in reality mm -mm, they don't know your life you know they don't know what makes you feel good they don't know what feels right to you right because that's the only time that it's ever actually right is when it feels aligned to you can't nobody tell you what's aligned to you only you can that's it. <clears throat> Granted, people can help you get there. And that's wonderful. That's a beautiful thing. I, I get it. Right? Because Capricorns, we'd like people to show us the way in a sense so that we can be sure that we're doing it correctly. But those days, it seems like that's ending because that's causing more confusion than it needs to be. <laughs> wow. So um, you have the killer whale here. Killer whales with 34 is that is chariot energy, which is cancer energy as well, like this high priestess. It says the killer whale says perseverance and determination brings results. So you just need to stick with whatever it is that you're doing. Don't worry about um, nothing outside of that, unless you just have people to take care of. Like focus on the people who love you. That's it. Because you got that wisdom. This this killer world talks about wisdom. And you got the owl at the bottom. That is about wisdom as well. You know, you you know the truth. <laughs> and I know it's like a big statement to say, but you know the truth. It says, you may be in danger of exploitation or deception. Investigate the facts and look beyond an impression presented. Alternating white spots along the back of the killer whale makes it look smaller, fooling its prey, allowing easier attacks. You need a clever mind to match your wise opponent because the killer whale detects, removes, and lays minds for the military. The feelings someone expresses may prove to be insincere, since this fearsome predator is the only cetacean that eats its own kind. Your future is happy. The killer whale outwits its prey, overcoming and averting peril by adapting to all environments and available sources. Resources. So yeah, that's what I was saying about just focusing on what it up, whatever it is for you to do. Also, if you are in a space of having relationships in your life that you're feeling like you can't really trust, you need to uh, take that into consideration because it's something in that um, you're not feeling that for no reason. <laughs> you're not delusional. Um, you you. It's almost as if like okay, I've seen this before. Right, so it's really a need to um, take time and recognize what's really going on here. What is happening here? 
Aquarius. What else is here for Capricorn? It's important for you to stay within your will, within your motivation, and keep your eye on your own personal prize, your heart-based um, goal, because that is what is going to support you in moving forward. Listening. So yes, make sure you are keeping an ear and that you are listening to whatever type of conversations it is that you are having, what it is that people have to say to you um, so that you can fully get the full scope of it and utilizing your wisdom within to uh, make it make sense, to see the truth of it. You know, I activate my receptive side and becoming an engaged, intuitive, professional grade listener. Supercharged listening gives me the ability to not only hear the words others are saying, but also to perceive the emotions hiding between their worlds. Armed with this knowledge, I'll be in a great position to give them exactly what they need, or if I prefer to dominate the planet. <laughs> Either way, okay, you got the killer whale here. They the only cetacean that eats their own kind. So that means, um, you know, anybody can get it. That's that kind of energy. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. I think Capricorns will be the only ones who will find that funny because somebody else would be like, that's offensive. But y'all, y'all get my humor. So, okay, we're going to keep going. I'm going to pull some more cards. What else is your spirit? Make sure you pay attention to what it is that you are being told, what it is that people are saying to you, how it is that they are saying and what it is that they are not saying. Okay. Read between the lines. Let your intuition guide you. You got that high priestess here in, in, in June showing you something. Showing you the truth of the matter, kind of pulling you out of, um, or more so you're helping people come up out of that, really. Um, it doesn't, granted, you may have also been experiencing that. Some of you guys are experiencing that, but some of you are also being the ones to help um, support another in that energy. So patience, you also need to have patience with the process. This is that perseverance and determination brings results. You have to just do the work. You have to trust the work. You have to just go forward with the work. It says, congratulations, you've been granted more patience. You may start using it right away or much, much later. Waiting a long time is the sort of option now afforded to you by greater patience. Can you believe it? Look at this. You're still reading and you haven't started getting annoyed. Imagine how this patience will transform your life. Imagine how easy it will be to go to the post office, right? So Capricorn, y'all don't have any problems taking care of business. You know, it is sometimes just getting caught in what it is somebody else is saying about what is right for you, what it is that you should be doing, what will work better for you. Um, and sometimes that's just not the case for you. You know, y'all have pretty great discernment on what is best for you and what is not. Y'all carry a lot of wisdom within y'all, like pretty much out of like all the signs y'all are really, it's always so funny to me that Capricorn doesn't really have, uh, they say that Capricorn doesn't really have that spiritual connection, you know, but y'all do, y'all really do. Like in the Rider weight tarot deck, y'all, this picture is the Baphomet. The Baphomet is wisdom, that's knowledge, that's knowing, you know, it, it, it has seen all and experienced all, so it knows, right, and that is a very spiritual thing to experience, um, the Baphomet is not the devil, how church kind of makes it seem, it's different, we're not getting into that, but follow your heart, okay, so let's see, what else is here, so What else is here for Capricorn? The Tenth House, yeah, so this is all about your public image. This is about your career, your reputation, your success in life. You are attaining that during the spring. Like if it, it, it yeah, it's happening. Um, it's getting started. It, it, if it's not already beginning, if you have already not started taking the steps, you have, it feels like you have. Um, you're already in the midst of it, not the thick of it yet, but definitely in the midst. 
because you have a reflection here at the bottom, which is a winter card, which is your season. You know, so um, see how you're reflecting in the world. How is your energy reflecting out into the world? Um, also, okay, and I was saying something earlier about reputation. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, Capricorn. Okay, I was saying something earlier about reputation, right? So it's like that is shifting a little bit, like either it's just changing in general, what people know you for, what people see you as, or it's it's growing, which are both the same thing, honestly. Um, but definitely you are finding success this in the spring month, um, especially in regards to your public image. Uh, in regards to your career and it's happening through internal means you know it's not something that is really changing on the outside granted the outside always shifts when the inside does right it's just by nature but um it's not something that people are watching something people are witnessing it's like something you're really keeping to yourself that's one thing i felt about uh earth signs is that y'all are really kind of staying to yourself and what it is that y'all are doing in order to make the thing happen it's like y'all are making it happen from the inside out versus having to do actual like continuous work like uh, the fire signs and the final card you have here is the K king of lotuses and this is the sacred woman and she's also the high priestess in moot the goddess moot and so this is the awakened divine feminine queen mother all right she speaks about purification guardian and mentor through sacred rites of passage the high priestess hidden influences intuition mystery spirit spirituality higher power and inner voice so some of you guys will be connecting with someone of this nature. This is some of you guys. Y'all are helping facilitate people through um, initiations in their life that will help them get to the other side of finding their own personal success in their own way, right? Because again, y'all got that wisdom, y'all know. Y'all already aware of, uh, y'all know the game. Y'all are the game, all right? Y'all are the game. So you know, the inner workings of it, you can see things that other people cannot see based off of your experience, based off of what it is that you also feel. <laughs> All right, because Capricorns are very intuitive people, even though I know people like Capricorns don't be feeling shit, they don't have no emotions, and that's not the, it's not true like that. It's true, but not like that. All right, it's not non-existent. It's just you don't see it, right? It's different. We feel it in our bodies, right? So it's a process for us. We are filtered. We're filters. We filter out information through the absorption of the thing. That made me, that's the best words I can put it in. So Capricorn, I hope that this is helpful. I hope that you have a beautiful spring and that this offers you much love. And I will see you guys in the summertime. Bye. Okay.